Hi, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We're in P5JS. The clips I'm showing you are some of the things I made in P5JS. In this video, I'll be discussing how to use color in P5JS to create generative art. We'll talk about types of color values, options for randomness, using arrays and tables, saving data for later use, and some other stuff. Before we get started, a reminder that NFT art contributes to climate change, so please say no to NFT art. Okay, I'm gonna assume that you have a basic understanding of P5.js. First, let's go over briefly the various ways you can make color. So option one, you can use a color name like light green or red, blue. You can use a hex value, which is what websites normally use. You can use red, green, blue, RGB. Uh, this number is the red, it goes from zero to 256, and this one zero to actually 255, and this one two, zero to 255 for the red, green, blue. You can use hue, saturation, brightness. For that, you have to switch to color mode, HSB, and then the defaults are zero to 360 for hue, 0 to 100 for saturation, 0 to 100 for brightness. There's also a hue saturation light at HSL. I don't know anything about that. Next, we're gonna talk about different ways you can use random values to pick colors, and also we'll talk about simple arrays. So this is an array here. I put standard color names in here, and that's generating these circles. Another way to generate randomness is just with the RGB random R, 0 to 256, random blue, random green. And you can see every time I hit start, I get a different set of random colors. Now, this is okay, except that these colors may clash quite a bit. Either the colors are very close to each other, like these two, or I don't know, they're just really far apart from each other. Like you've got this gray color with this bright green color. And so as a color palette, this is not very good. We could of course use the hexadecimal value to fill circles. And we could put hexadecimal values in an array just like we did with these named colors. I should mention there'll be links to this example and other examples that I use in the video description if you wanna go look at the code. We can change the color mode to HSB and we'll use 360, 100, 100, 100. This last one I forgot to mention, that's alpha. So how transparent it is. Now here I've picked a random color for the hue of the first circle. But what I wanted to do was spread out the randomness, uh, the color selection, so that there aren't two colors that are very close together because those would clash. So I've taken, uh, I've got seven items. So I've taken the 360 divided by seven. Uh, I pick the first color and then it's adding 360 divided by seven to get the second color, 360 divided by seven again to get the third color and so forth. So they're evenly spaced apart on the color wheel. But the first color keeps changing, so if I hit start, you'll see another set of values, like so. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing these into an array. So I create a palette array here, and then I'm picking the starting value, and I'm gonna come back to this to explain what this is about. Then I start a for loop uh, with how many colors I intend to pick. So I'm picking seven colors in this case, that's what's in num colors and then I push whatever that color is that I pick into the array. So palette1.push, the color that's picked, goes into the array. But as I'm doing this, perhaps I've started with color number 300, and I'm gonna go past 360 pretty quickly. So if it goes past the end, then we're gonna subtract uh, so that we basically go back to the beginning. Now that I have it stored in the array, I have to take the values out of the array. So I've got another for loop where I'm grabbing the hue from the position in the array. And then once I've got the hue, I'm filling with hue 
and then I'm creating the circles down here. I'm creating the circle by taking the width, divide by the number of colors, multiplied by the Q, which is this in this for loop. So in this case, it starts with this one and then it goes to this one and so forth. Now let me get back to this range and start color to show you what that's about. Let's say I want evenly distributed colors, but I don't want the entire rainbow. I just want part of that rainbow. I want a, sort of a monochrome palette. So what I can do is start, let's say on 200, but have a range of 100. And now you can see I'm going from blue to magenta. I could start at zero and only go 100. And now I'm going from yellow to red. And here's uh, 180 to 230. We get some nice shades of blue. Now for this, I've got the saturation and the brightness both at 100, but of course we could change that down to 70 and you get sort of an Easter egg pastel. Let's put the saturation back to 100 and the brightness down to 70 and you can see things are just a little dimmer. Let me put that even farther down. And then we could randomize. Let's get rid of that and we'll randomize the saturation. So every time I click on here, we'll get a different saturation, but it's not a different saturation for every circle. It's just a different saturation for the entire palette because this is not in the for loop that's drawing these circles. This is above that for loop. We'll do the same thing with the brightness. So now we're getting random values for the saturation, the brightness, and the hue. But let's say I want to use the palette I've created, but I don't want the colors to appear necessarily in a set order. I just want to pick from that palette. So this is looking at the array and picking a random number out of that array to, to, to pick a random color from that array. So here I've got two purples and two reds. So I can go again and now I've got two of these are the same color and this one and this one are the same color. And of course you could populate the array with a, a particular color palette that you like and then use something like this to pick random colors out of that palette so that everything goes together well in your picture. So that's everything I wanted to talk about with this example. Now here's an example where I'm using a color palette to draw squares. Uh, the color palette keeps changing, but in this case I've got specific color palettes that are in a file. So if I click this over here you'll see that in addition to the sketch there's a colors CSV file here, which has a color table in it. A table is a kind of an array, but it has columns and rows. So this table has five colors in each color palette. Each one has an R, a G, and a B. And so this row right here is one color palette with RGBs for five different colors. Let me go down to the bottom. And I've got 676 different color palettes that I can pick from. So in the text, I'm preloading the table, load table with the name. I've got let palette equals random 676. So I'm picking randomly from the 676 palettes. Then from that palette, I'm picking randomly from the five colors that are within that palette. So then I'm getting from that table, table.get, the palette and the color times three. So it's times three because there's an R and a G and a B. So if I'm picking color number two, the R, I don't want to get from the second spot in that table on that row. I want to get it from the fourth spot in that row because the second spot in that row has the G of the first color. So once I have my R, my G and my B, then I'm just filling with RGB and then I make my rectangle. Another thing you can use is a color picker. So here I can do something like this. I've got my color and I can click save color. And when I clicked on save color, it stored that color into an array. So you can see that here. And this array, just so you know, when you use a color picker, 
there's a lot of information in the array. What you're looking for is this part that says levels. And this is the R, this is the G, this is the B, and this is the alpha. Now to get this to show in the console, I just said print color picked, but I could do print color picked dot levels and hit enter. Now I'll do another color and save that. And now I just get that information, the R, G, B, and alpha. So creating the color picker, I did a let color picker at the top. Uh, color picker equals create color picker. Then I've, I've got the save color button. And when I press that button, it's going to look at the color picked level zero and save that, that's the R value, into the table. And then it also saves the G value and the B value. So I'm adding a row to the table and then creating the RGB to that row in the table. And then I hit save file and it creates a CSV file. So as I said before, a CSV file has rows and columns. So here's the RGB uh, as titles and there, there's the RGB that I selected. So I just put one into this uh, CSV file, but of course I could have put a whole bunch of things in here. So let me do a couple more colors. I'll save this one. I'll pick this color and save that. Then I'll save the file. We'll open this file. It's just created a CSV file. And you can see it's got the R, G, and B. And here are the three colors that I selected. Now the other cool thing about the color picker is it's got an eyedropper. So I can do this. And let me go and pick this color off of here and there we go and I can do that on anything that appears on my screen so I could go to a website that has color palette on it and use the eyedropper to pick each of these colors and this is the website coolers I'll leave a link to that in the description here's the text at the bottom for when I click on this save file it's function save file save table uh, table colors CSV the CSV is the type of file that I'm saving. So I could choose a JSON file here if I want. So here's a, another example of a color picker and in this one it's creating a JSON file. So here's what the JSON file looks like. There's the R, the G, the B, and the alpha. I don't really like using JSON files. I prefer using a color table myself. But the reason you want to create a file, if I didn't make that already clear, either a JSON file or a CSV, is so that you can save stuff in one program and then have another program where you use that information and bring it in to your new program. Now I want to talk about converting RGB to HSB because what happens is you might have converted to HSB in your code but then you want to use uh, the get function or a color picker but when you use the get or the color picker it returns a RGB value, not an HSB value. So P5JS has some functions built in to look at a color and pick out what the hue is, or pick out what the saturation is, or pick out what the brightness is, and the alpha as well. So this first square I created with RGB, but then I converted to HSB, and now I want to duplicate that color. Let's see if I can duplicate it. So this second square is my attempt to duplicate this one. This square is not using RGB, it's using HSB. And I've gotten the HSB by doing this stuff, and then I fill it with these variables that I named here. Now this only works if when you convert to HSB, you're using 360, 100, 100 for the hue, saturation, and brightness. And I also found that the alpha has to be around 300. I haven't figured out exactly what the right number is for this. The reference material says that it should be one here, but if I put one here, I get a very different color. You see, this one is quite red. Change my R and my G, and you can see that the one on the right is more of a brighter green. And so I'm going to put this back to what I had before, 300 for the uh, alpha. And you can see they're a lot closer. They're not exact, 
but they're close. So I don't know exactly what the alpha is supposed to be, but it's, it's around 300 to 350. Another good thing to know about is the lerp function. Lerp just looks at one color and another color and tries to combine them uh, the best it can. And it's basically just averaging what the R values are, averaging what the blue values are, averaging what the green values are. But it has a weighted average. So right here is the lerp function. And so it's taking the first color, the second color, and it's doing 50% of each. So if I change this uh, from 50% to 80%, it's now taking 80% of the color on the right and 20% of the color on the left. And if I change this to 20%, now it's taking 20% of the color on the right and 80% of the color on the left. The last thing I wanted to mention was a pixel array. Now that is a big topic, but basically it means the entire canvas uh, is filled with pixels that have RGB and alpha, and you can keep all of those values for the entire canvas in an array. And then when you want to do something to it, let's say you want to draw a dot in the center that's red, but based on what's already in that array, what's already the colors that are already on the screen, you want something to happen. Maybe if there's a blue right next to it and you drop a red next to it, you want purple to happen to both of those pixels. And so using a pixel array is a way to do that because you can check the position on the left of where you're dropping that dot uh, what is in the array at that moment and then you can replace both of those pixels with a new color and the other nice thing about the pixel array is that you do all the calculations first and then you draw the canvas at the end so that saves uh, some computation to learn more about pixel arrays I would suggest you watch this video by Dan Schiffman on the coding train I'll leave a link to this in the description so that's everything I wanted to talk with you about for using color to make art in P5JS. I'm sure there are things that I missed or things I got wrong. You can leave me comments. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.